Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Professor Alison Lewis, and I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering and the Built Environment. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to this session around the Faculty of EBE. I'm joined by my colleagues, Mary Hilton, who's the Communication and Marketing Manager for the Faculty, and Disa Mogoshana, who's running our first year orientation. So welcome to both of you and welcome to the attendees. Um, and I hope that you enjoy this introduction to EBE. So 2020 was the year of COVID. Um, but even before COVID, I think as a faculty and as a university, we recognized that we needed to plan for a very different kind of future. The Vice Chancellor started a futures think tank to start thinking about the future of UCT and to be proactive in leading and shaping that future. And COVID pretty much just fast tracked that process. So as EBE professionals or engineering and the built environment professionals, that's precisely what we, we are trained for, finding innovative solutions to new challenges and complex problems. And I hope that's why you've joined this faculty. So in our view, the future is now. So just to give you a little bit of an orientation around the faculty, we have six departments from the left there, APG, which is Architecture, Planning and Geomatics, and the undergrad degrees there offered are Architectural Studies and Geomatics. CEM offers Construction Studies and Property Studies. Civil offers the Civil Engineering degree. Chemical offers the Chemical Engineering degree. The Electrical Engineering Department offers three programs, that is Electrical Engineering, Electrical and Computer Engineering, and Mechatronics. And the Mechanical Engineering Department offers two programs, Mechanical Engineering and Mechanical and Mechatronics. So if you don't see your degree there, the one that you are planning on registering for, then you are in the wrong Dean's presentation. In EBE, we have about 4,500 students, of which 69% are undergraduates, and of those undergraduate students, about 15% international. About a quarter of our students are postgrad, in other words, 25%, and of those, about 24% are international, and about 6% of our overall student cohort um, is PhD. So here's an up-to-date snapshot of our first year students as of the 12th of March. Um, on the right hand side of the graph, you'll see our smaller departments, which is architecture with 72 first year students, geomatics with 30, and construction economics and management with 79. And then on the left, you see the traditionally bigger engineering departments, with the biggest being electrical engineering with 182 first year students, Mechanical with 163, Chemical with 103, and Civil this year with 70, which is a little bit lower than we normally have. So this slide here, I'm going to talk a little bit about teaching in 2021. And everything I'm saying here, you can find on our EBE website, and you might like to follow up there. So I've given the link on the slide, but it's basically the EBE UCT website, um, and it's under the undergraduate teaching in 2021 tab. So basically this year, we're going to be using new models for teaching. And as I said at the beginning, in some ways, this gives us the opportunity to do things we've been wanting to do for a while. This blended learning idea is actually the future, as the VC said in her introduction. Um, and using a combination of face-to-face -face and online learning, we believe is actually the way to go. Fully online has disadvantages, and why we need face-to-face -face is for a number of reasons. Firstly, that learning and education are themselves, we believe, social experiences. And uh, being at university in your bedroom online is not really being at university. We do believe you need to meet other students, really have the interaction and the networking experience, but you also need face-to-face -to, -face to be able to get to know your lecturers, to be able to engage on complex problems, to get feedback, to engage in small group work, and then of course, on a very physical level, to be able to do laboratories and practicals. So in this faculty in particular, we feel that face-to-face -face is important. So our new model is going to be exactly this, a blended model 
with a combination of online and face-to-face. -face. And as you'll see with some of my pictures, we prepared our venues so that they are COVID safe and COVID appropriate. All of our thinking around bringing students back to campus has been predicated on being safe, COVID safe. So not only have we prepared our venues, um, we prepared safety inductions um, and safety uh, messages, which are going to really emphasize that the only way we can do this kind of learning in COVID conditions is if we all look after each other's and our own safety. So that's been absolutely top of mind in all of our back to campus preparations. So yes, as I said, this is offering us opportunities to pilot new teaching methods and a wonderful, unique opportunity for staff and students. One of the things that EBE is well known for is our level of student support, which is very broad in the faculty. And I'm just going to give a brief outline of these six bullet points, which are different kinds of support that exist in the faculty. Uh, every first year student has a student advisor, and this is an academic normally who's in a department and the first year student will know who their advisor is. And that's the person they could go to for advice about curriculum and other such academic matters. We also have a program called Aspect, which offers a five year degree instead of the four year degree. Um, in other words, instead of cramming everything into the four year program, you can do a planned extended program and spread everything out over five years. And besides the spread, the Aspect program also offers additional support. Um, and so that en enables you to really do a planned five year degree. We have in every department at least one academic development lecturer, and those are academics whose main job is to think about teaching and learning. Their research is all around teaching and learning. Uh, they've uh, played a huge role in getting us to this point of being able to do blended learning, um, and they really spend their time thinking about how to enhance uh, the teaching and learning aspects of our faculty. We also have something called boot camps. Um, the official name is tutored reassessment programs, but those never stuck. So now they seem to be called boot camps. And what these are is if a student fails a single course, for example, and then is prevented from uh, progressing to the next year, we offer, for example, like a two week tutored slot followed by an exam where students can have another go at getting to grips with the material, rewrite the exam, and then have a chance to move on in the curriculum. Uh, so it's not just a SAP, in other words, it's actually the tutoring and the getting up to speed with the material first, then followed by the exam. Our tutor system is run by postgrad students. Um, so all courses have got tutors allocated to them. And the advantage of this, besides just having a tutor, is that the undergrad students get to know the postgrads and the postgrads can also become a kind of informal mentors to the undergrad students. So we find that works really well in the faculty. And then lastly, we have a mentor system. This is where senior students volunteer to act as mentors for first years. Every first year gets allocated a mentor and we probably have two or three first year students for every one mentor. It does vary year by year, depending on how many students we have. And these mentors are then senior students that have been through the system or are going through the system and can advise first year students about how to get up to speed and how to survive the new challenges of first year. Um, if you've been in the VC and the DVC presentations, you've already heard about Willa. Willa is our online learning platform. And um, if an EBE student wants to know anything about orientation, they should just type in the UCT Vula address and go to EBE 2021 orientation. And Deesa Mogashana, who I introduced earlier, has spent weekends and nights making sure that that website is up to date with all the information that our first year students, students need to know about orientation. But then for every course that a student is registered for, there'll be a tab on the Vula site, so one of these tabs the student will go to the tab and find all the information they need for that particular course on the tab. 
So I'm going to end my talk with uh, four very commonly asked FAQs, um, and then I'm going to open it open, open to the floor. So the first question I heard was dealt with extensively in the VC and registrar's presentation. How will I know how they are doing academically? The short answer is you will have to ask them. Um, the UCT sort of official answer to that is that the student is the adult and the client. They're the ones that are registered. Um, and so UCT communicates with the student both in terms of um, academic information as well as course information. Do they need to do vacation work? Yes, in EBE there are varied requirements for vacation work. Um, and the place that you'll find that is um, on the EBE website, and I'll point that out just now, where you can get the EBE handbook, which tells you everything that you need to know about every course. What books do they need? This information is also on our orientation website, a full list of textbooks for every program. And the last question, can they change their course of study? Yes, under certain conditions. So the advice we give is register for the choice of study that you've been accepted for. Up to the end of week one, you have the potential to change as long as your new choice A has space and B that you meet the prerequisite for that course. So this option to change your curriculum doesn't allow you to enter one program with a lower um, requirement and then swap into a program with a higher requirement. You will need to meet the requirements of your preferred program and you'll need to find out if they have space for you. So this uh, slide, if you um, remember no other slide in my presentation, probably this is the one to remember. This is our home page, our EBE faculty page, and you'll see um, on the um, undergraduate registration and orientation for first year's level here. On the right hand side, you will see everything that you need to know. The online orientation program, there's the book list, that's the list of architecture material, the laptop requirements for ChemEng and for others, and here is the undergrad EBE handbook, which I really recommend that you have a look at. It's a PDF and it's got everything about every program and every course uh, that's offered in EBE. So with that, I'll say thank you very much for your attention. I'll leave it there um, and I'm open for questions from the floor. Yeah, maybe I can answer um, because I've looked at all the questions sent um, in advance and try to group them into various categories. And I think some of the questions, just to clarify, I suppose, how UCT works, is that some of the questions were related to residence and meals and residence placement. Some were related to parking. Some were related to sort of other parts of UCT. And just to clarify that um, this talk is around the faculty. In other words, probably mostly academic questions. Questions around residences and around finances would need to be addressed to RES and to the fees office. Um, I thought one good question was, um, since we don't have online orient, since we have online orientation, how are students going to get to know their way around UCT? So one uh, very innovative thing I think that was done in my faculty was that we made a 360 degree tour, a virtual tour of the faculty, and that's available on our EBE homepage. So you can have a look by zooming through the different parts of the faculty what is where um, and when students come onto campus they can use a combination of that and their uh, newly acquired networking skills to find their way around so so one of the questions that's come up is can any student opt for the aspect program uh, yes, so the ASPEC program applies to the four-year EBE degrees um, and those students can, after the first couple of weeks, uh, divert themselves into the ASPEC program. So yes, as far as I know, the answer is yes. Yes, and, and I'll publish it um, uh, uh, that, that they can email Pierre Leroux. Um, yes, okay. Correct. Thanks, Mary. I see Pierre Leroux um, is addresses in the chat there. Thanks. 
sorry, if if I may come in also with another question, um, uh, it was more around um, registration issues, and maybe if you could address that around the delays in some of the registrations in the faculty. Yeah, won't you clarify what the question is, Disa? Um, that the child has been experiencing delays in registrations. Um, the um, yeah. So the student has not re regist registered and there's been yeah, delays in, in, in the actual registration of the student into the program. OK, so maybe I mean, obviously it could be potentially different reasons for the delays, but um, so one possible reason could be that a student doesn't know which courses to register for. And um, that's partly why I've recommended that um, this, the EBE handbook is really the place to go. So if I'm looking at the mechatronics program, then here I see the four year and the five year curriculum and there's mechatronics and here there was actually a question all about mechatronics, which is partly why I've looked this up. So this tells you all about the mechatronics program and here it tells you exactly which courses the first year student should register for. So on the registration form, the student should be sure that they tick all these boxes and register for these courses and ditto for any other programs they're doing. Here's the full second year course list, the full third year course list. And if you want to know like what every single course is about, you would just look up that course. Um, so let's do E triple E one zero zero six. And further down in the handbook, it'll give you exactly the course outline of the course, what the name of the course is, how many credits, who convenes it, what the course is all about. Uh, okay, the lecture times will not be the same for this year, how the assessment works, and those will be a little bit different with online, but it'll give you the actual content of every course. So those are for especially a curious parents, but definitely I would say that students should be um, very up to speed with the handbook. So one is, is how will the students know if a lecture is online or face to face? The departments will communicate with students exactly. So maybe I can expand a bit on that. So um, because we have too many students to have them all on campus at all times because of COVID restrictions, we're going to divide students into bubbles. And so a student will be told your bubble is going to come to campus um, on Monday and Thursday this week and on whatever Wednesday and Friday next week and your um, whatever 1002 course will be face to face, but your 1003 course will be online. All of that information will be communicated to students by their home departments um, and that's given that I never lose an opportunity to punt the advantages of EBE. One of the advantages of EBE is that students join a program or a cohort. So once you've signed up, you've got a kind of a package deal and then you belong to a department and the department will tell you what's happening. So it's not the, the buffet option where you are in different departments for different courses. Can you comment on how UCT EBE graduates compete in the market? That's a nice question. Thank you very much. Um, I would say they compete very well. I think UCT has an incredibly good brand, but I think besides the brand, we backed up by what I think is a real quality education. Um, UCT EBE graduates don't only go into engineering in the built environment, you can find them in finance, in management consulting, um, in government, in all sorts of places. And I think I always say that one of the big advantages of an EBE degree is it teaches you how to do complex thinking and complex problem solving. So whether the problem is a finance system or a wastewater treatment plant or a spaceship, your EBE skills will be will hold you and stand you in good stead. Um, Alice, there's another one about when are students expected to be um, when are students expected uh, to be to arrive to be in Cape Town? Still that one. Okay, so our intention is to start face to face on Monday, the 15th of March, 
because we have this venue restriction and we can't have all our students on campus and we've divided them into smaller groups, it means that we have to use the whole term end to end as much as we can. Um, our, yeah, so what we're planning on doing is cycling students in small groups through practicals and tutorials from week one. So students should be in Cape Town from Monday the 15th. They have until Friday the 19th to register. So theoretically, they could not be in Cape Town until Friday the 19th, but after that, they pretty much need to be physically in Cape Town. And Alison, there's a lot of questions about, about how they're going to know. Um, so it's looking on, on the orientation site and looking on the Vula um, course sites where, where the, the departments will be um, posting it. Yeah, so that website I mentioned, EBE 2021 orientation, Vula site, that's Deesa's site, and she has put there as much information as we know about what's expected of students from Monday. So I would say that's your first port of call, and then in parallel to that, the departments should be letting students know. Can a student change to aspect after realising that they're not coping with the main four year course? Absolutely, but you can't leave it too late. There is a deadline for uh, changing to aspect. Um, and as Mary said, Pierre Larue is the person who runs aspect, so he'll be communicating that. Um, but yeah, it's pretty early on in the term. You can't wait until you're really sinking before changing. We encourage students to make the decision pretty early on. So I'm um, hoping I have answered the one question, which is about somebody struggling to register, even though the student advisor said not to worry, he still does not know which lectures to attend next week. So as I said, if he is a first year and he knows what program he's doing, then the EBE handbook will tell him exactly what courses he should, the property studies. Okay, so then you'd look on the property studies part of the handbook and it'll tell you exactly what courses to register for. Um, there was a question uh, earlier on um, the third wave, the possibility of the third wave and what EBE then um, plan will be should that happen. Yeah, thanks Deesa. Um, I'd just like to answer this other question because I think it relates to what we've been talking about now and it's a misunderstanding. It, the question is, does it mean that in the first week of every new semester you can apply to change majors? And the answer is you can only change once and that is in the first week of your first year. So not that that chance only comes once. Um, OK, so the question around the third wave. So the plans we've put in place so far are based on a lockdown level three which we believe is probably the default lockdown level for South Africa for the foreseeable future. Obviously, if the third wave is very extreme and we go to lockdown level four or level five, we will um, reduce the amount of face-to-face -face activity that we have. But I think in general, the framework of our plan would apply to, to, to lockdown, definitely to level three, I mean, lockdown level five is very, very severe and we won't be able to come to campus then. But uh, yeah, level three, we'd be able to cope with. So do, um, do students report into campus on Monday? Only if you've been invited to campus. We don't want all the EBE students to come on the same day. We're trying to stagger the entrance onto campus. So. You must look on the website on your Vula site or on the EBE 2021 orientation Vula site to determine whether or not Monday is your day or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, but don't just pitch. So could I say for an example, um, mechanical engineering have sent a, a letter to all their students and they have said informed that the first years will be coming on from next week the 22nd of March. So this week everything will be online. They will go to their Vula site. They will see what courses they need to do um, and do that online. And then from the 22nd, they'll be told where they need to be on Monday the 22nd. 
Okay, cool. So you mean next week, Mary? So next week is fully online. The week after, after is twenty second. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And that you found on the EBE twenty twenty one orientation bulletin. And the mechanical sent me a copy of the email that they sent out to all the students. Okay, excellent. So I hope that answers the questions around which bubble and so on. The bubble information must come from the departments because they have determined which students belong to which bubble. And I think this is for DISA. Do we need to worry about knowing any everything ourselves? Our young learners not fully informed by now. You seem to have run a thorough orientation for them. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, that's thanks to Mary and Disa and that team. I really hope so. I mean, one of the problems is information overload and the zoning out thing. But yes, they they should be able to. If they didn't remember it, it should be somewhere in the material they've been given or have access to and on bullet. So Disa, maybe you want to fill in there. Yes, I mean, I just want to add, I mean, you know, the, 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 the adv there's ad the advantages and disadvantages to the situation in which we find ourselves. But under normal circumstances, if you've missed, a day, if a student missed the day of orientation, they have no way of catching up. But in this case, a student who, you know, registered late on for whatever reason was delayed, they can actually go to the, you know, to the EBE 2021 orientation site and follow the program from day one with the VC welcome, the dean's welcome, everything is there. Even at one o'clock in the morning, they can still have access to orientation. Excellent. Thank you, Disa. So, yeah, this is the world we live in. We're, we're hoping that our students are going to be watching our orientation program at one in the morning. <laughs> the dedication. And, and Disa, the one was about uh, mentors being assigned. So what happens to the latecomers? They will still assign them to the mentors. Yes, so the late, uh, so the first session with the mentors happened today. Uh, those who are registered late or who are arriving late, they will be allocated to the mentors and the mentors will make contact with them in the next week or two. Yes. That is all I have for now. OK, well, it seems we've run out of questions, but um, thank you very, very much, everybody. And special thanks to Disa and Mary for um, being part of this presentation. Uh, I think the EBE 2021 orientation Villa website is the place to go. There is a Q&A there, so if students have got questions, uh, they should be posting them there. Um, and the other thing I should mention is that EBE is on Instagram. Um, we've got a fantastic little Instagram program going, and we also have the option for direct messages there, which are responded to almost immediately. So if students prefer to contact us through Insta, then they can do that as well. But thank you very, very much, everybody. I hope that you've enjoyed this, and I hope you're feeling good about being an EBE parent. Thanks a lot. <laughs>